Unlike Unix-like systems like Linux, Windows applications generally don't call the system calls directly, but rather they call APIs that wrap the, these system calls with a more friendly user interface. So in this video, I'm gonna give an example of calling exit process, which will terminate the process that is currently running. And the function exit process actually comes from the kernel 32 DLL. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write a little assembly program that is gonna call this function. I'm gonna show you how it gets eventually to the native API. I'm gonna start with the global command. I'm gonna use the NASM assembler for this assembly. And I'm gonna make my entry point, which I'm gonna call main. I'm gonna make this accessible outside. Afterwards, I'm gonna use the extern command to define a function that comes from outside, in which case this is gonna be exit process. Afterwards, I'm gonna start the text section. So here I'm gonna start the code. I'm gonna start the main label here. And I'm gonna call exit process. So I'm only gonna need a single argument, which is gonna be the exit code. So in this case, I'm just gonna use RCX, which is the first argument in the calling convention of x64 windows. I'm gonna just pass an indicative number here. So it's gonna be just 44, 44 in hex. Afterwards, I'm gonna call exit process. Now let's go ahead and assemble this code. So I'm gonna open the Visual Studio Native Tools command prompt. I'm gonna put links in the descriptions for all the programs I'm using in this video so you can install them on your computer. But I'm gonna open the program called x64 Native Tools command prompt for VS 2022. Now I'm gonna to navigate to my folder. I'm gonna start by running NASM with Win64. That's gonna be the format argument. Afterwards, I'm going to run the Visual Studio linker on the object file that was produced by NASM. And I'm going to also pass in kernel32.lib because as you can see in the documentation, if we go ahead to the requirements, you can see that the library is kernel32.lib. Entry is going to be main. And now finally, I'm going to open up the Windows debugger, so WinDBG. And I'm gonna launch the executable. I'm going to start by running the command G and then EX entry. This will bring me to actual entry point of the program. Now, as you can see, we're on the first instruction of the program. So here we can see the assignment of our exit code before calling the function. Afterwards, it calls the function. So I'm just gonna step inside by the way, I use F10 to step over and F11 to step inside. So now I'm gonna use F11 to step inside of the call. I'm gonna follow the jump. Let's see where this gets us eventually. So now we're in a function called exit process Impl implementation. We're now inside code of the kernel 32 DLL. We now arrived at the NT DLL, but we're not yet at the lowest level function of NT DLL. So let's continue on. I'm gonna skip over this call, doesn't look related. Also this call I'm gonna skip, and this one as well. Also the critical section. I'm gonna skip that. And I'm gonna go inside of this call. This is the actual lowest level call that it's gonna arrive. So I'm gonna go inside F11. Now I can see we're in the, we're in the function NT terminate process. So if I just step a little more further in, inside, you can see that we arrived at the syscall instructions. This actually makes a system call to the kernel. So if I just let this program continue running with G, we just run the last event. And you can see that the program has exited and we got the code that we wrote. Now, instead of calling exit process, which comes from the well-documented Windows API, specifically from kernel 32 DLL, I'm gonna use now the undocumented API that we just saw in the debugger that it eventually arrived to. And this is actually undocumented API, so it's not a good practice to use this, but we have some unofficial documentation right over here. I'm gonna put a link for this in the description. And if we just go ahead and search here, the function that we found over there, so nt terminate process, we can see the parameters here and a little explanation here. So it actually gets two parameters. First one is a process handle, but if you don't specify it, the caller process is going to be killed. So I'm just going to specify zero over here and the exit status comes over here. So instead of using exit process, I'm going to use nt terminate. 
process. Same thing for here. And now instead of passing this into RCX, I'm going to pass this in RDX, which is going to be the second argument, and RCX is going to be zero. That means that the color process is going to be killed. Now I'm going to save this again. I'm going to use NASM again to assemble this. Let's link this, but this time I'm going to link this with NTDLL. That's because the function now comes from the native API. Entry again is going to be main. Now we can go to the Windows debugger. Let's go again to the entry point. And you can see now the passing of the arguments, so 0 and 444. Now it's calling exit here. And you can see we arrived straight into the NT terminate process from NTDLL. So this will just shortly actually make the system call, as you can see right over here. If we take a look at the actual registers with the R command, you can see the exit code right over here in RDX. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.